Well, welcome, and thank you all for coming out on such a blustery day. I'm glad to know so many curious people. Hmm, mm, did that come out quite right? I'm, I don't know. <laughs> um, how about inquisitive, inquiring, wondering, pondering, questioning, interested and curious people? What's she been up to this year? And what on earth did she mean by elementary art? Was it a typo? Uh, did you mean elementary art? They're questions I've heard of quite a few times over the last few weeks. I've often heard somebody say, I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. That's elementary art, art that you respond to in your gut. Elementary food is food that's good for you, food that nourishes you. This is elementary art, art that supports, sustains and nourishes you, art that makes you happy. Come next week and see how five children took on this idea and, and really ran with it. They've, they've extended it even further into a bake sale and a raffle and paintings. They're raising money for the children's orphanage in Cambodia so they can help sustain others as well. Elementary art indeed. So you see around you images of food, harvest, nature, but the impulse behind it continues to be memory. Last year, I put on a major solo exhibition at Green Hill Galleries as a celebration for my mother's 80th. Um, and many of you came to see that. Thank you for that. Um, about a month before the opening, I was tying myself in knots. It's not unusual. <laughs> because there were more images in my head than I had time to paint. And although those images were related by inspiration, they weren't related visually to the original concept. And I was so frustrated. It took my sister Leslie to cut through all the angst with a simple, why not have part one and part two? So thanks, Les. Today you see many new works around you, part twos of series that I've exhibited previously. But I wasn't quite finished with the series yet. Earlier this year, I was asked by artisans of Barossa to revisit my familial fruit and the Before the Wine series as part of the art and degustation tour for the Barossa Vintage Festival. I jumped at the chance, usual, two feet in, and then think about it. And in spite of a very tight deadline, I was really wanting to do this particular series, partly because of these images behind me of the grapes and the snails. They've been nagging me to paint them since they missed out on the last exhibition in 2011. But what to do about the timeline? Many of you know firsthand that I don't paint quickly. So both original series had sold out completely and I decided to reproduce a selection of work from the Taste of Summer series and in a smaller set of uh, prints on canvas, which you can see around you as well, um, to augment the show. And then I couldn't resist painting these luscious quinces. Dad keeps growing them. And every harvest, before the quince jelly, the quince paste, stewed quinces, mm -hmm. baked quinces, quince crumble and quince roll-ups, comes the oh moment. When one has a gorgeous knobbly bit and another has a beautiful blush of green and later the gold deepens and the light hits it just so and I'm off painting again. <laughs> no. Don't cook that one yet, I need it. <laughs> the more traditional still life, the pomegranates with board, the, the persimmons with personality, thank you, Brian. Yes, they really did grow that way, even though nobody, I, you will never see a persimmon like that in a shop, but they really did grow that way one season. And thank you for allowing me access to your beautiful tree. It's one of my favorites. 
The Quinces with Rose, and that follows on from the Inspiration and Memory series. Historically, in still life, objects often have a significance beyond their individual appearance, and so it is with many of my works. However, unlike medieval concepts of still life, which reflected the transience of earthly delights and the brief, the brevity of life, my focus is on abundance, allowing the happinesses found in the small details of daily life to fill the canvas and fill our vision and our focus, reminding us that present joy and this moment is sufficient. I pay tribute to the long tradition of still life painting though through my use of oblique light which intensifies colour and focuses composition. There are more to come framed around the fabrics which, fabrics which defined my mother's life. Fabric, its warp and weft have long been a symbol of life and the thread of destiny or fate. So art reflecting fabric? Huh. Why not art on fabric? Yes, she's off again. Curious Kate. I wonder what my art would look like on fabric, on chairs, cushions. Thanks to Spark Fabrics in Sydney for printing my artworks and to McConnell's for upholstering my chairs. Thank you, Joe, Patrick and Matthew for helping with the almond design and Mum for being the go-to girl for just about everything. Thanks to Margaret for making the cushions in the midst of family hardships and Inner Green for developing such a great way to reuse plastic bottles. Yes, there are at least 22 recycled bottles in every cushion. And many, many thanks to Mark and Robert for developing the new website to show it all off. Of course, a final thank you to all of you for coming. Coming to support this fabulous visual arts festival we call the Sala Festival. It's the only one of its kind in the world and there are over 5,000 artists participating over this month. So enjoy the variety and further develop your taste for art. Sorry, I couldn't resist the pun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming.